security for world leaders is main priority. How big is PNG's tourism potential? And the UN commits to protecting PNG's environment. This is National MTV News with Helen Sayer. Good evening and thanks for joining me for Tuesday's news. The PNG government will make security for world leaders attending the APEC summit in 2018 a priority. A security meeting was conducted in Port Moresby today to ensure logistical planning and the transport system is perfected. This is the eighth security meeting between members of the diplomatic corps military partners and other international and national law enforcing agencies. These meetings will provide intelligence on how to provide escorts and the transportation of world leaders and their delegations to the meeting venues. Since 2016, members of the three disciplinary forces have commenced numerous trainings in their areas of specialties. The Commissioner of the Royal Papua New Guinea Constabulary is adding this special operation with numerous support from the PNG Defence Force Commander and the Correctional Services Commissioner. The previous seven security meetings, which were also held in Port Mosby, were to identify security focus areas and the appropriate security techniques that members of both PNG and Australian disciplinary forces are supposed to conduct. The meeting ended with a tour of the APEC House. Tekla Gunga, National MTV News. An application was filed at the Supreme Court in Port Moresby to delay the transferral of refugees from Manus Regional Processing Centre to East Larangau. Lawyer representing the asylum seekers Ben Lomai explained that the application is to ensure that the transferral of over 600 refugees in Lombrum is done with accordance to human rights laws. The centre was ordered to close on October 31st, which is today, because it found that its establishment was unconstitutional and illegal. Immigration Minister Petrus Thomas explained yesterday that there will be a review of the resettlement agreement and Australia will have to state clearly how it will continue to support PNG with the processing of these refugees. Meanwhile, Minister Thomas says PNG authorities will not be using force to move the refugees out of Lombrum. The 21 senior police officers who were given directives to take up new posts in the Royal Papua New Guinea Constabulary are expected to do so by today. The transfer all comes after a reshuffle was ordered by Police Commissioner Gary Baki earlier this month. They include NCD and Central Divisional Commander Sylvester Kalau to move to Human Resource Division, suspended NCD Metropolitan Superintendent Ben Ture to Deputy Commander Highlands Eastern End. However, suspended NCD Metsup Ture will move to the next command after his suspension lapses. It's of, uh, November. Uh, due to uh, you know funding and uh, transport uh, situation, uh, probably a few days uh, after 31st. But the commission's directive is that every senior officer that has been transferred they have to get in, uh, get into the office by 31st. So I know that uh, the training commander Mr. Perro and uh, his um, successor that are coming in will do the handover tomorrow. Meanwhile, the suspension of NCD Metropolitan Superintendent Ben Turi has been uplifted this afternoon. This comes hours after the transferal directive of the Police Commissioner Gary Baki to senior police officers lapsed today. Turi was suspended for 21 days following internal disciplinary issues within his command. Turi confirmed this moments ago, saying the suspension uplifting is a relief. The tourism industry has always been seen as a potential revenue income for Papua New Guinea. The International Federation Corporation, the private sector arm of the World Bank Group, is supporting the government to identify high-spending niche markets for future tourism. A tourism assessment marketing sizing was presented to stakeholders from the government and private sector. 
marketing. The Tourism Demand Assessment is an initiative of the International Finance Corporation, the private sector arm of the World Bank Group, which has been carried out in partnership with PNG Tourism Promotion Authority. Um, in the long term, I think we would like to bring to, to support investment, both domestic and foreign investment, into Papua New Guinea tourism. Um, and we'll see what, what form that takes. But uh, as, the, as tourism developments, the need for specific assets, the need for investment increases. And that's where the IFC, I think, in the long run, is quite interested in staying engaged. The assessment found that key opportunities for tourism were bird watching, diving, historical tours, cultural tours and soft adventures. The assessment used multi-method data collections over a six-month period. TPA CEO Jerry Agu says that most cultural attractions and tourists come to PNG in the later six months of the year and a more detailed assessment will be released in November. The government and everyone in this country know the potential, the great potential we have in tourism. Everyone is talking about potential. The only problem is we haven't, you know, put the resources and the, and the, and the money. We are on, only talking, you know, every time. Amongst issues of what is hindering tourism in PNG, the assessment found security and safety are common issue for different tourism products. While the cost of service in PNG being high, and a lack of marketing for tourism products. Marketing budget we have at the moment is like four million kina. You know we are paying for all this overseas uh, office for a marketing representative. We are paying retainer, and then with a the limited amount of money, we are just doing basic marketing. Meanwhile, for the World Bank country manager Patricia Vivas Carter, she enjoys tourism in PNG and hopes some detailed assessment can be noted and addressed. The World Bank, why? Well, why World Bank Group? Why does the World Bank Group care so much about tourism? It's all about jobs. So every year, 30,000 young people graduate from high school. Only 5,000 of those go to university. What happens to the remaining 20,000? Young, the 25,000 young children, the young kids. Do they have a career prospect? I think tourism would provide another fantastic career prospect. So we need to think, how can we actually prepare young people for this industry? There's a lot of opportunity there. She said the World Bank has given a 20 million US dollar loan to assist the PNG government in growing the tourism industry. So, Gary did mention we have just approved a 20 million dollar loan uh, to Papua New Guinea. And that very much will focus on two areas, two provinces, um, uh, Milan Bay um, and also um, East New Britain. And so the idea there is to create institutions uh, to actually make the whole touristic experience, you know, um, you know more organized uh, for um, foreign visitors, but also to improve the infrastructure. So Adelaide Sirox Kari National, MTV News. National MTV News continues after the break. Stay with us. Welcome back. Caravat National High School is one of the oldest in the country and confident to produce better academic results this year. Despite being known for all the wrong reasons, school principal Ray Alo says Caravat has moved from strength to strength to restore its glory days. Over 100 grade 12 students graduated recently during its 45th graduation ceremony. The 45th graduation ceremony of Caravat National High School last Wednesday was a colorful event as the blue color dominated yet again for another year. The school, located in the Gazelle district of East New Britain province, is one of the four national high schools in the country that continue to exist since the colonial days. Selected grade 10 students from all over the country come here to continue their grade 11 and 12 education. Thank you, kids. School principal Ray Allo and his 21 teaching staff see it as their personal responsibilities not only to educate the students but to challenge negative public perceptions about the school. This is really never again year for me. Very tough year. I got a kids in this. Kervat National High School was once known for all the wrong reasons, a cult movement, the deteriorating infrastructures and a school that almost had all its money depleted through alleged corruption had put the institution at the brink of collapse. Although it was temporarily closed in 2011, 
It was reopened a year later and had been in operation ever since, but that is now a thing of the past, the principal says. We are ranked one out of 156 secondary schools who produce great works. At this formal send-off last week, as the students prepared to go back to where they came from, they were asked to remember that they have been part of this school that produced politicians who helped chart the future of Papua New Guinea in the pre-independence days. For the principal and the teachers, their only aim is to continue producing better academic results and restore Karavat National High School back to its glory days. Edwin Fidelis, National MTV News, Kokopo. A teacher in the autonomous region of Bougainville has thanked the National Education Department for applying the rule of zero tolerance on cheating. She says security control on national examinations is a further step to minimize cheating. And the review of systems and process of examinations by the National Education Department since 2015 creates a brighter future ahead for the development of education services in the country. Jacqueline Burat is St. Pius Primary School's head teacher. This school is located in the Hagogohe constituency on Buka Island. Burat told MTV News applying the rule of zero tolerance on cheating and this is national examinations is the way forward. And yesterday saw the first feature on exam papers, security tape. That is already a clear evidence that envelopes has to be originally sealed. If unsealed, likewise, that's already a sign of cheating. National Education Secretary Dr. Oke Komra says security control will allow for fair examinations and to stop cheating that has occurred in previous years. I administer a very uh, fair examination and ensure that every student is on us in an equal playing field and no one is better or no one is given any opportunity that is better than another student. Meanwhile, deliberate actions by the National Education Department not to certify cheating students is the way forward. Appealing to all school administrators that they are to secure all exam papers and no cheating be allowed because all the students, they are to be certified with these exams. Validity of the exam has to be kept capable in the hands of school administrators, external and internal invigilators, and into the hands of the markers. Fabian Hakelitz, National MTV News. A grade 8 student in the autonomous region of Bougainville says fulfilling dreams requires time, effort and commitment. Augusta Kiraha says choosing a career pathway is not difficult but achieved through honesty. And she wants to become a journalist after completing her studies. Augusta Kiraha is a grade 8 student of St. Pius Gogohe Primary School on Buka Island. She's among over 5,000 grade 8 students sitting for the national examinations this week. MTV News caught up with Augusta on Sunday during the dedication service. I'm ready. I'm ready to take the pen. I'm ready to write uh, on the exam seat, exam paper seat. I think I've studied enough. Achieving dreams is about sheer hard work and commitment. And Augusta watches MTV News regularly and wants to become a journalist. Well, I'd like to be a political journalist. When I finish my studies, I want to take after my grandfather, uh, Peter Sohia. At first, my dad used to tell me that, Augusta, you, you should, I want you to be an engineer. And I, when I grew up, I said, okay, I'm going to be an engineer. Then one day I said, no, no, I can't, I can't be like my father. He's a mechanical engineer. And my other uncles, they are engineers also. And I said, no. I, I will not be like them. I am myself. Augusta has passed the best of luck wishes to all grade students around the country. I wish them all the best. Uh, may their minds be sharp. May their answers be accurate. And may they take the next step in their education life, in the education field. Fabian Hacklitz, National MTV News. 
Minister for Higher Education, Research, Science and Technology Pila Neningi is encouraging students in higher learning institutions to take on sport as an activity to stay out of trouble. Neningi used the Kumul's win as an example for students to take up any sports that will keep them disciplined and keep their minds sharp for school. Minister for Higher Education, Research, Science and Technology, P. Leninigi, encouraged students in higher learning institutions to take on sports as an activity to stay out of trouble. Minister Ninigi, upon congratulating the Kumuls for their win against the Wales over the weekend, stated that getting students in different sporting codes is a way forward to address disciplinary challenges on campus. We wanted to encourage our young people uh, to participate in, in, a, in, a, in a game. Uh, not only rugby league but other games as well uh, so that it is it is healthy uh, they don't involve in uh, other activities uh, so sports is the way and sports it must be taken as one of the curriculums uh, that he said while in his capacity as the minister responsible for higher education he will make sure students are involved in sports so there are new talents to scout for the country's many national teams. Stacey Yellow, National MTV News. The sixth contestant in the Miss Pacific Islands pageant PNG was announced today in Port Moresby. 25-year-old Esther Iger is the latest and final entrant for the Miss Pacific Islands pageant PNG 2017. She is being sponsored by KTK Accountants and Advisors Limited. Kuna Tadari Akirawi Accountants and Advisors, an accounting firm based in Port Moresby, has jumped on board to support the Miss Pacific Islands pageant. Its contestant, Miss Esther Iger, comes from a family of five and is a senior work permit and visa consultant at Pelamo Consultancy Service, a small SME company owned and operated by her mother. As part of her campaign, the three key aspects Ms. Iger aspires to advocate on are education, health and safe sex education. The reason why I joined um, to be the contestant on Ms. PNG was to empower young women. I would like to thank my sponsor, KTK. Thank you for believing in me to be and uh, represent your company. Um, as you can see, there's mostly women in your company, and that empowers me to do something and help others too. Miss KTK's wardrobe will be designed by Elizabeth O'Mary of Denani Designs. Chairperson of the MPIP p g Committee, Mrs. Molly O'Rourke, thanked KTK Associates and Advisors as well as Miss Iger for supporting the pageant and the cause it stands for. This pageant is... Um, stands for empowering women through education so the Miss Pacific Islands um, pageant has got a scholarship fund and every year we um, open we send out um, nominations of forms to eligible participants out there. Yesterday corporate apparel and fashion wear company Kabaka Limited trading as after dark fashions announced its contestant 26 year old Rachel Ezekiel. A total of six contestants have been confirmed to participate in this year's pageant. The crowning ball of the pageant will be held on November 11th at the Crown Plaza in Port Moresby. In PNG's six years of participating in the Miss Pacific Islands pageant, Abigail Havora is the only contestant that has claimed that title in year 2015. The United Nations Development Program will continue to support the programs that protect Papua New Guinea's flora and fauna. Resident Representative Roy Trivedi says the support is on environment, conservation and protection of endangered species. He said UNDP will work closely with the government and other organizations involved in such programs. UNDP's presence in Lumi, West Sipi province was acknowledged by locals through the welcome reception. Welcome. It was the opening of a new administrative building and a blushing block for the Tankile Conservation Alliance to accommodate visitors and researchers. It cost 330,000 kina and was funded by UNDP and the Conservation and Environment Protection Authority. Mr. Trivedi said TCA's work is very important 
and commended the effort in protecting the environment and driving development. This is a non-government organization established in 2001 aimed at conserving the biodiversity of Papua New Guinea's Torricelli mountain range using the critically endangered Tankile and Weimang tree kangaroos as flagship species. Meanwhile, TCA's Chief Executive Officer Jim Thomas thanked all donors and partners involved in their development over the last 15 years. Fabian Hakelitz, National MTV News. Ten years after the signing in 2007 has seen the renewal of contract between All Search Limited and Air New Guinea's subsidiary Link PNG for the fixed wing aircraft services for domestic and international route. After a competitive tender process, Link PNG was awarded the final three years contract initial term with additional optional extension periods. Earl Search's managing director Peter Botten, speaking at the official signing yesterday, said Air New Guinea has been providing a safe and reliable fixed wing air service for Oil Search since 2007. Link PNG General Manager Bruce Alabesta says they look forward to the continued safe and successful relationship. And now looking at our finance news, the Kina closed unchanged at 0.3115 US dollars in the interbank markets. At Bank South Pacific, your Kina was buying 0.304 US dollars, 0.3917 Australian dollars, 0.2573 Euro and 34.03 Japanese Yen. Looking at commodity prices at New York close, cocoa and copra closed higher, gold is trading lower while coffee closed the day lower. Palm oil and copper closed higher while crude oil is trading the day lower. And on the stock market, the Dow Jones closed at 85.45 points lower, the ASX closed at 10.08 points lower, and the All Ordinaries closed at 7.32 points lower. Stories making headlines overseas when we come back. Stay with us. Welcome back to the news. Today, Catholic faithfuls ended the month of Rosary, a devoted prayer to the Lord's Holy Mother. Catholic youth of the Port Moresby Archdiocese over the weekend staged a motorcade carrying the statue of Mary through the different parts of the capital city. They prayed and sang, imploring peace and protection. The program was hosted by the Celestian Parish of Mary Help of Christian Sabama with over 300 young people participating. Youth chaplain Father Dong Saladaga inspired youth to strengthen and develop a close relationship with Mary and her son Jesus. The youth are now looking forward to the 2019 World Youth Day in Panama. The Polytech Institute in Ley now has its new and upgraded metal fabrication and welding.